Hi, Donna here from Donna Parker's Artistry. Thank you for joining me on my new channel. Um, I was going to show you how to do a resin work, but when I first started in resin, oh, it's over three years ago now, I knew I wanted to use resin, but I didn't really understand how to use it or in what way I could use it. So I thought the first things first, we'll do some safety. So for all of the advanced people, you probably won't want to watch this. This is only going to be a short video, but I think it's important just to run through the safety measures of resin because resin is actually um, bad for some people for their skin they get rashes all over their skin um, other people if you've got a respiratory problem um, resin's not exactly the best thing to do so I am going to do some what I call housekeeping and just explain to you the importance of reading the um, instructions on the safe way to use resin so here we go as I said resin is um, I don't know I don't want to use the word toxic but I suppose in a way it is it's it's not exactly the safest medium for us to use when heat goes onto resin if you breathe in the fumes it could cause health problems health issues and if you don't wear gloves, you could end up with um, skin lesions and that. So resin's not really a medium that you can play around with. It's an enjoyable medium to work with once you've got all the safety precautions intact. But you need to follow the safety instructions. That's another thing too. It depends on what resin you use as to what the safety instructions are. Some resins are casting and they, they set quickly. Other resins are art and they're slow. Some cure within 45 minutes. Others cure in two and a half hours. So basically, every, res, every different brand and every different type of resin you use, just check the um, safety precautions. My husband and I, um, just before COVID, spent a bit of money um, filling in our double garage and make turning it into my studio so I work in an area that is safe for resin I get claustrophobic so me wearing a mask is um, it, I just panic I can't wear one the best I can do is one of these thin little things so what happened was we put double doors into um, the, where the garage is, that's all door, and we've got a back door that's open. I've got a row of exhaust fans running down the centre of, of my studio that have exhaust fans that are running all the time. You might be able to hear them during this video that are slight hum. I've got a split system that actually has an exhaust on it. I also have um, industrial fans that um, I turn on when I deem it necessary so it cost I don't know all up about five thousand dollars all up to get everything um, so that it's uh, safe all I can say to you is if you're doing resin in your home make sure all the doors are open make sure uh, all the windows are open um, have your if, if you've got exhaust fans put them all on if you've got a split system that has a, an extractor in it turn that on just follow the instructions and if you're in a tiny area wear one of these wear one of the big guns all right these are filters right and it goes on goes over your head and that helps, that will help um, with any of the heat vapors. If, like me, you're claustrophobic and you can't handle it, see if you can ha wear one of these that's got a nose pinch on it. Okay. 
any force comes to us, wear one of these because something's better than nothing. All right, so um, that will help protect your lungs. Now your hands. I have two sets of gloves here, okay? These are cheap supermarket gloves, 10 bucks a pack. These are Black Wolf gloves. Um, they're actually not nitrile examination gloves. When I'm working for a long period, I will wear these because I don't know if you can see that, but you can't even see through these gloves. They are so thick. They're very good for protection. These, I've had these on and I've had them rip halfway through and the resin's gone on my hands. I still buy these for when I am doing things like, um, right at the moment I'm getting some craft stuff ready for Christmas sale. So if I'm just popping, standing something upside down and pop, popping the resin over and manoeuvring it around and it's only going to take me a couple of minutes, I'll wear these. I won't waste these. But these are the ones that I normally wear. Just make sure you've got gloves that are thick. You know, when you first start out, you can't afford it. So if you can't afford it, double glove. Put two on. You know, play it safe. Because... I've seen some people that have actually had some pretty bad sores from resin. Cleaning. I have a container and in this container I pour metho and I have paper towel. It's not thin paper towel. It's the really tough thick paper towel and I have that in here. And when I want to wipe my hand, my gloves, I just grab it out, wipe it, put it back in, and then I get a dry piece of paper towel and I wipe my gloves with that. If you buy thin paper towel, you'll be going through a roll every time you do a, a project because everything just goes through and it, it breaks up and it ends up on your gloves. It's, you're better off having a tough bit of paper towel. This will last you at the whole project that you're doing, seriously. So that's paper towel, mess over there. Also, alcohol. Alcohol is extremely hard to get hold of. Plus, in Australia, it's quite expensive. I get this from Munnings. It's almost $30 for a 600ml bottle. But when I'm working with inks and that, this is what I need. So this is what I purchase. All right. I also, now this is going to be controversial because a lot of people are going to say you don't mix dust with resin. And they are true. It's perfectly true. But when I'm working all day and I'm having to take gloves on and off, you get, your hands get sweaty, they get sticky. I use talc. I put talc on my hands, I rub it around, and then I glove myself. It makes it a lot easier. Also, when I'm finished at the end of the day, once I've washed up, I just put talc and powder on my hands just to um, break the barrier between the resin <laughs> and um, my, me touching things. You can also get alcohol wipes. They're hard to get these days as well. I managed to get some of these from the chemist, but I use those as well. Now, first aid. In my studio, I have a workplace first aid kit on the wall behind me. I also have a second one, which is a sport one. So I have two first aid kits in my studio. I also have two fire extinguishers and two fire blankets. When you work with resin, you need to have 
you need to be within arm's reach of a fire extinguisher. Um, what else is there with safety? I use my heat gun. I got this from Bunnings. Um, I all my heat guns, even the ones from my workshops, bought from Bunnings. Um, I got it for just under fifty dollars. It's got a temperature dial. It's got a little nozzle. It's got three speeds. So I use that because the thing with um, the resin is if you heat it up too much the fumes become really bad and you burn your resin. So you're very careful with that. Especially if you use one of these. These need to be kept moving all the time. Do not stop in one spot with these. Like they're quite easy to use. But like anything with a flame, it'll burn it really quickly. So you need to be in control of that. My sticks that I use, I just get from the cheap shop. I use these to measure my resin. It's got both. So I use those to mix my resin in. I use... Um, cups to mix my colours in. All of this is from the cheap shop. You don't need to get overly, um, don't need to get expensive stuff. Just get the cheap stuff. There's certain things that you need to spend the money on and certain things you don't need to spend the money on. And also, reuse them look at this one that's got splits in it i didn't want to throw it out i just keep using it so this is paper tape and i just put paper tape over the split and i just keep using them right the next thing you're going to want to know is how do i clean my jugs after I've mixed, after I've finished. What I do is when it's empty, tip it upside down and I just leave it. The next day I come in, pull it off the baking paper that I use. It's another thing, baking paper, good stuff. And then I, I left this one to show you. All I do is pull it off pull it off and as I'm pulling it off it pulls out and that is how easy it is to clean the inside of your container but it's only this easy if you actually mix your resin correctly if you leave any hardener or resin on the sides of your container without it being mixed in properly it'll be soft spot and it'll be tacky and it'll never dry but that's how easy it is to clean a container and you just keep cleaning them. It's got a hole in it. Um, you just, then I'll, I'll use this. I'm going to actually going to use this in a minute. I'll use this again and then tomorrow I'll come and do the same thing. So that's how easy it is to clean your resin. So essentials are baking paper protect everything if you're doing it inside like I did it on our island mat inside for three years before I actually moved out and made a studio I use plastic building plastic you can get this from Bunnings it's not that expensive it comes in um, a packet um, I have that on the table but just to protect the plastic, I actually use baking paper because on the baking paper you can peel off your little bits of resin. I actually use these in my artwork. I don't throw anything away. <laughs> so um, it peels off like that and then you can reuse it as you'll, you'll see. I'll do that in the next video. So yeah, ventilation fire extinguisher or fire blanket make sure you've got 
a mask just to cover just alcohol for safety. or meso. Gloves, if you can only afford the thin ones, double glove it. It's as easy as that. Um, tough paper, that's about it I think. Make sure you've got a first aid kit away around alcohol wipes, that's about it. So the other things that are important before you even start doing resin is get the safety first. I mean, I'm not here to lecture you, you're adults. If um, you want, you do it your way, um, but I've got 11 grandkids and I'm just about to become a great grandma, so I want to be around to play with my great granddaughter. Bit exciting, she's in hospital right now. So, um, yeah, just protect yourself. We all love our art, but what's the point if um, we're going to put ourselves in danger? Let's enjoy it in a safe way. All right, enough of the lectures from me. That is my um, beginner's video safety first <laughs> and the next video I'm going to actually show you how to mix resin in this without getting it all sticky and you know sometimes when you pour out you might have a soft spot on your artwork it's because you haven't mixed it properly so I'm going to show you how um, my resin company taught me how to do it I'm going to pass that information on to you I'm also going to show you how to mix the resin because there's different ways of mixing your resin with your different pigments so i'm going to show you how to do that as well so yeah thanks for watching please hit the like button and i'll catch you on the next one have a fantastic day guys bye